It is time that we understand that not all impressions are equal. You can make a bad impression. Not all press is good press, regardless of what you're thinking right now. And so, there are so many macro trends. $80 billion spent on television, and there's not a, you wanna see something crazier than the standing up? By show of hands, how many people here now watch television outside of live sports, not when that TV show airs, but on DVR, TiVo, whatever your country's version of that is, or Netflix, HBO Go, how many people now watch television on their time, not when the show airs? Raise your hand, raise it high. Oh weird, all 12,000 of you. And how many people here, when given the option, fast forward every single commercial? Raise your hands. Go figure, everybody. And even if those brands that are spending $80 billion to sell you some fucking soap get lucky because, I don't know, your remote control fell off your fucking bed, every person here, when that happens, grabs this and comments on what they just saw or checks their email. My friends, it is about attention. It is about attention. The way we have to storytell is predicated on attention. I'm sad that Twitter's not the number one social network. I spent all, and some of you know this, I spent all of 2009 through 2012 spending 13 hours a day replying to every fucking person on Twitter. I was the 30th most followed person. I'm sad that it doesn't have everybody's attention anymore. But I did not do what so many people do in this room and start crying and dwelling and hoping that it held on. I started understanding what was happening on Snapchat and Instagram. And sometimes I figured out what was going on on Vine and social cam and they may not be around anymore but the fact that so many in this room are scared to take the risk to learn new platforms because they might not be here in a couple weeks or a couple years without realizing that only once do you have to actually buy the beachfront property on the most important platform and you make all your time ROA possible is wild to me. You have to wrap your heads around in this entire room that this is now the television and the television is now the radio. And Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat are ABC, NBC, BBC, and Sky, and whether you're a startup, or a B2B company, or an entrepreneur, or a corporation, you need to figure out how to make the best shows on those networks. There's something I said in a video on my YouTube channel that really has just continued to strike, and so I wanna share it. It's probably the most tangible thing that I can leave you with at this conference and I wanna give it to you. A lot of people hear that spiel that I just said. A lot of people realize that I've spent a lot of years advertising, creating content, and nothing, nothing trumps building a brand. There's a lot of digital marketers in here that understand quant conversion. They're mathematicians, and that's phenomenal. I love math. But marketing is not math. It's a mix of math and art. Used to be a whole lot more art, it's a lot more math, that makes me happy. I love when art and math have a kid and it's the greatest thing, right? That's where we're in right now. That's why so many people struggle. Some of you are really artsy fartsy and love them creative and want it all subjective about the color of the fucking teal shirt. And other of you love math so much, you can't look anybody in the goddamn fucking face, you think it's all math and you don't give a shit about what's on the other end of it. You're both wrong, it's the combination of the two. The reason Facebook is such a big platform and the reason Facebook as we sit here outside of Russia and China is the number one platform for every single person here to sell shit regardless of age and demo, B2B or B2C, is because it is the one platform that combines the two at a scale that we've never seen. But creative is the variable. If I came up here today, I've got the attention. I've got the attention right now, but if this keynote sucks for you, I did not convert. And if it did, it did. And so creative, my friends, is the variable of success. What's important about that is people are crippled by the creation of content. You're sitting right now and thinking, but what am I gonna make? I'm not as handsome and charismatic as Gary. What am I gonna do? <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> and so, so, there was something I said to a kid 
And there's so many of you that are so smart and get this. You realize making videos on Instagram and Facebook can change your business. You realize writing articles on Medium and LinkedIn can change your business. But you're stuck. You don't know what to say. And so I will tell you what I'm most, you know, it's funny. I'm building it up because I'm building it up for myself because I know in two or three years, like many other talks, I'll get emails from many of you saying this was the thing and so I'm excited so I'm building up the drama for myself. What I said to the kid was, and he was stuck, I said, look, the problem is everybody, and everybody in this room is trying to create content. If you can make this slight shift in your head tonight, we've got a real shot, which is the following. I believe that all the upside over the next decade in storytelling, in a mobile-first environment driven by video is predicated on documenting, not creating. If you understand that you could just talk about your meetings, or picking up oranges from that bullshit app, or whatever it may be, that documenting the journey. There there are actually startups in this room who are totally fucked. They're not good enough, their idea's straight shit, they will go out of business. However, if those two entrepreneurs, Karen and Rick, actually documented their daily journey of trying to buy the business or build the business, they would actually have other people eventually, if they're good enough, interesting enough, they would have other executives and entrepreneurs actually watch that journey and maybe lead to an hire for talent, maybe an acquisition, and if nothing else, more leverage for a job after the aftermath. We need to start documenting. We are all media companies. We have it right in our hand. We're shy. We're scared. We're worried about what other people are gonna think. Fear is not an option if you've raised your hand for entrepreneurship. Fear is not an option. I prefer to lose. I sometimes secretly hope that my companies go out of business to zero, I lose everything. All of you write things on social media that I actually sucked and was full of shit and then in the dirt with a fucking, the pain, I'm gonna rise like a fucking phoenix and kill all you motherfuckers. I mean it. Yeah. I mean it. If you do not have that or some version of that in your stomach, then find somebody to work for that does. Because we've lived through seven to eight unbelievable years of economic bliss. If you think this shit lasts forever, you're either super fucking young, clap it up for the youngsters one more time. They don't fucking know. They were like seven the last time shit was bad. Or you forgot you don't want to deal in reality. All my friends talking about all these changes and Brexit and presidential, you have to deal with the reality of the situation. Dwelling and pondering and crying doesn't do shit and it especially doesn't do shit in this eco chamber. In this arena, there is no crying. You can cry, you're just gonna lose. And I have bad news about complaining and crying. Let me tell you something about complaining and crying that's really, really gonna hurt for all you complainers out there. Nobody gives a shit. And let me give you a preview who gives a shit. The following people give a shit when you complain. The other losers around you. Your sick, broken parent that secretly wants to hold you down so that you're not more successful than them. And let me remind you one more time the other fucking losers around you. So, here we are, heading into 2017. People are asking all sorts of questions. We still, clearly, are close, or it has to happen sooner than later, economic crush. Many people here, rich on paper. Go talk to a lot of 40 to 50 year olds that were rich on paper during Web 1.0 back in 99, 2000, 2001. It's sitting, it's flustering, it's here, it's upon us, and now we have to, more than ever, we have to start deploying self-awareness. If you leave here and start your process of really knowing what makes you happy, of who are you really, if you could stop chipping away the voices from the outside, if you can start figuring out what you're scared of, if you want to actually do something, even in the light of the picture that I'm painting right now, who are you scared to fail in front of? The reason so many of you are not doing what you want to do is you're scared to fail in some, 
You're scared that your brother will judge you, your wife, your girlfriend, your husband, and most scary, your mom or your dad. You need to eliminate that and or own that fear and put yourself in a position to succeed. Because with all of this, with all of this, we are now in the greatest era. For the first time ever, with no fucking money, with no goddamn connections, this can put you on the map. If you're good enough, if you are good enough to be up here, to make bling bling, if you are good enough, nobody's stopping you. Not fucking Donald Trump, not the fucking Russians, nobody. If you are a minority, if you are a female, if you are a transgender, if you're a fucking alien, the market doesn't give a fuck. If you make the best shit, you will win. Do you know how sucky it was to be a nerd 20 years ago? But now the market is rewarding fucking nerds and now they're rock stars. Clap it up if you're a fucking nerd. The best part about that was so, some dude was clapping for him and I said, clap it up if I'm a fucking nerd. He was like, that's awesome. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm so grateful. I was born in the Soviet Union. Both of my grandfathers spent 10 years in jail for being Jewish, right? Like more people in America died last year because a coconut fell off a tree and hit him in the head than from terrorism. I'm just gonna say that one more time. Yeah, true. Funny thing about data, it doesn't fucking lie. More Americans died last year because a coconut fell from a tree, hit them on the head, they died, <laughs> than terrorism. As somebody who aspires to be one of the great brander and marketers of his generation, I refuse for hate and horseshit and negativity to outmarket me. I will sit here today, I will sit here on the slides on every one of those platforms when they put it up, I hope they do. Follow me back there, you told me you would. Thank you very much. On stage, on those platforms, every day, 24-7, 365, I will remind you that life is phenomenal. That nobody gives a shit, so the government or your mommy's not gonna help you. You gotta do it, own your shit, but it's never been better. We've got a bigger chance than ever. We can do our thing. And so I flew from London, I just flew in, I barely fucking made it to this talk. All the fucking guards here are fucking gangsters. Right? Fuck those guards. I barely made it here, and I don't know, I've got some other talk now for 45 minutes about marketing on another stage, and then I'm flying home. And the only reason I wanted to be here, the only reason I wanted to be in Lisbon for four hours today is because I knew there was a lot of you, I knew there was a lot of youngsters, and we are choosing what to listen to on social media now. So we're going into what we want to hear, and a lot of people need to hear one of two things today, which is, this is the greatest era to ever be alive and be an entrepreneur or executive if you want it, and stop complaining and dwelling because nobody gives a fuck. Thank you. <laughs> yes. 